and after I got that done, then I took it and pressed it down through a bearing. And let me show you this bearing here. The outer diameter of the head of the flashlight, or the, the inside diameter, was 26 millimeters. And so I knew I needed a bearing with an outside diameter of 26 millimeters. My problem was I needed an inner diameter of 10 millimeters, because, or 6 millimeters, because that's what the shaft diameter is, 6 millimeters. I wasn't able to find a bearing with an outer diameter of 26 millimeters and an inner diameter of 6 millimeters. So what I had to do was buy this one and then buy these little bitty bearings because these little bitty bearings have an outside diameter of 10 millimeters so it allows it to fit right inside of the big bearing and an inner diameter of 6 millimeters so that the shaft of the universal joint goes right into it. The nice thing about it, which I didn't realize until I got it all put together, was that the grease inside of this large bearing is, is fairly stiff and uh, if you're just using them for roller skates or something it's no problem but for this application you want as, as little um, resistance as possible. Uh, and so I discovered that once I got these little bearings installed in here the overall resistance, the radial resistance was essentially nothing because the resistance of these little guys is, is uh, very 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 low and so Anyway, it turned out that it was actually a better design than had I just gone with the large bearing by itself. The nice thing about these little guys is they have a, a collar here. So when you press them into the large bearing, they set flush and, um, and they only go down as far as the collar will allow it. So I put one on one side of the bearing and then I flipped it over and I pressed one into the other side of the bearing. So what that gave me was better lateral stability because I had two bearings rather than just one. Um, so that worked out very well. And then I, I made a, um, a collar out of brass right there and I drilled a hole in that and put a set screw in it so the set screw holds everything in place nice and tight. And so when you put this sleeve in here that and then put it all together you end up with an absolutely perfect fit there's absolutely no resistance whatsoever at least none I can detect um, it's very 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 smooth and for this application it's absolutely perfect um, the nice thing is it didn't cost very much but yet it does a perfect job so that's the handle and um, seems to work good. So the next step was to make the tubing and this tubing here I made from a wind chime. I uh, just took a piece of wind chime material which is this guy right here. It's um, I believe three quarter inch in diameter and it had a wall thickness of 70 thousandths of an inch which is fairly stout but it doesn't seem to be too heavy for this application and um, I bent it and uh, painted it and it seemed to come out really well so I'll show you in another section here how I actually did the bending uh, let's see here So that's what I used for the tubing. For the center portion here, the brass piece, again I took that brass chunk that I got off of eBay and I slabbed off a chunk of that and uh, drilled it and tapped it and, uh, and used that for my center weight. For the adjustable, I wanted my arm to be adjustable, this portion right here, so that the lower arm angle, let's see here, so that I could adjust the angle of the arm itself. And uh, let, let me move the camera back here. Okay, I wanted the arm to be adjustable, the, the arc to be adjustable. 
And uh, the way I managed to make that happen was I had a, a device in my truck for mounting a cell phone and it had an, a little articulating arm on it. So what I, I wasn't using that any longer. So what I did was I took that section, which is right here. I took it off of the um, cell phone adapter and it fit right inside of the tubing. It was absolutely perfect fit. And so what it allowed me to do was to adjust the angle of the arm and then I can tighten it down with this adjusting knob and the angle of the arc that I set stays in place. That I found is almost essential. Um, when you start balancing these things they become, when you get right near the balance point they become incredibly sensitive and having the ability to adjust that arc really makes a difference in getting a fine tune to it. Uh, so for the end weight, I did the same thing. I took that brass piece that I bought off of eBay and I machined it down so that it was the right weight. Drilled a hole in it and tapped it. And um, so that's what I used for the end piece. To mount the base plate assembly onto the tubing, I uh, made this adapter here. Uh, I made it out of a piece of angle aluminum that was uh, two inches by two inches by two feet long. I paid three bucks for it on eBay plus shipping. And um, I just took a chunk of it and the angle aluminum and slabbed it off and then uh, ground it down to this shape here. <clears throat> and um, it seemed to work really well. It was very ex inexpensive and uh, and it allowed me to mount the tubing to the base plate fairly fairly well. There's absolutely no give to it at all, no play. It uh, worked out very well. And so for the counterbalance weight, which is this part here, all I did was take a piece of, uh, I took a brass center punch that I wasn't using and um, cut off a chunk of that, drilled a hole in it, and put a set screw in that, and that holds it in place. So that seemed to work out very well. And then for the very front of this, which is very hard to see here, um, which is this part here, I had another solid chunk of aluminum that I sent down to my brother who's a machinist and had him machine that for me. And then I used that uh, to mount the tubing.